Welcome back hunters. This week we are learning the bow. It has become one of my favorite weapons. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't try this out earlier. So for those of you watching, if you haven't tried out this weapon, now is the time. I'll briefly talk about some of the attacks available and their pros and cons, followed by combos. That'll lead us right into stamina management and that's a pretty important factor for any bow user. It is probably the biggest factor actually that separates us noobs from the pros. I'm going to round out this video by talking about some necessary skills, jewels, builds, and that includes the new weapons from Safi and Colby. So starting off the bow attacks, let's start off with the big one, Quick Shot. It's a great wide close range attack that is heavily overlooked by most bow users. And I say this because it is mostly useful to restart a combo or just add in a little bit of damage. But the big thing I want you guys to keep in mind is that this attack costs zero stamina to use. That's right, zero. You're actually regenerating when you're using this attack and it still outputs damage. This is going to be important for you to maintain your stamina because as I mentioned before, bow stamina management is absolutely crucial to any fight. And if you lose it, well, you can't dodge and we all know what happens after that. But yes, while this may not be your highest damage attack, it can still be very useful to sneak in. So if you take a look here, I'm at the last legs of my stamina here. I'm in a recharge phase now. So I just sneak in a quick quick shot. And I get a knock actually instead, but I was also recharging my stamina so I can go right into my full combo DPS. So yeah, I've seen a lot of pro and speedrunners do this. They always keep their stamina up because of the quick shot, so keep that in mind. It's not a bad thing to use while you're recharging or starting a new combo. It never hurts. Well, it hurts the monster. Okay, so let's go over some of the other basic attacks before we move into combos. Alright, rapid shots are your normal arrows. They are pretty much just quick damage. They're good for when you're at a little bit of a range. From the monster and they can also charge your bow so it takes three until you reset or if you have the mighty bow jewel you have four shots until you reset so you'll notice here each successive shot gets higher damage per arrow and additionally you get an extra arrow every time you charge up to three max so if you have the mighty jewel on you actually get an extra three shot damage you can also charge the bow by holding your charge until the reticle stops pulsing that'll tell you that it's at level three now, unfortunately, holding this charge mid-hunt does slow your movement down, so it's not very ideal. So thankfully, we have the sidestep charge. Now, this is a brilliant move, not only because it charges your bow, but it also acts as an evade and you can dodge a monster's attack. This does, however, consume a lot of stamina, so do keep that in mind that you'll need a balance between evading and shots needed for higher DPS. Last note I want to make about charge shots is that they are great for status effects, in a way that they save you arrows to get multiple afflictions during a single hunt. They won't save you time, but as you know, you can't carry many of these arrows. So restocking is a waste of time as well. So definitely using charge can save you some arrows. So here I just did a quick exemplary test for you guys. The top left is using a single rapid shots charging method while the bottom is using a full charge while dodging. And we can see using max charge status coatings uses overall less arrows from your limited supply. Power shots are a burst of arrows, much wider than the rapid shots, and their damage actually scales with the charge of your bow. Like the rapid shots, if you charge up your bow, you gain more arrows and you can go up to 6 arrows with the power shot. So this one does a lot more damage, but it also drains your stamina like crazy. The other issue with the power shot is that it has an animation lock. So you can see here, I stop moving to the right when I take the power shot, and I keep moving. But if I use the rapid shots, I can keep moving as I'm charging my bow. So in general, this attack isn't really useful unless you're using it in combination with others. And we'll talk about the combos in just a little bit here. Arc shots are now the bow's ability's way to apply KO damage, which is a great way to make openings in monsters. It's like dropping little coconuts as people have described it on the monster. Now, quite honestly, after you get two knocks, this is pretty much useless and you don't need it. It's quite hard to get the third or fourth knocks, so I would just go for your DPS. Now, the easiest way to get here is to start charging your bow and then hold down the power shot button. That's going to bring up an aimer that will allow you to move and maneuver where you need to aim your shots. Now, just a fun fact of the aircraft, ladies and gentlemen, this is a full 360 degree shot. So if by chance a Nergigante jumps over your head, please feel free to take the shot. The second and quicker way to integrate into your attacks is just to follow a power shot. Just tap the same button and it'll do an arc shot right away. Now you'll notice here that if you follow it up really quickly with the power shot, you'll notice there's no aimer. So the quick arc shots have a predetermined distance and as you gain more experience with the ball you'll learn to figure out where that distance is and exactly how far you need to be. 
The last thing I do want to mention about arc chests is that they are scaled to your charge yet again. So you can see here, if I do a regular one level, it's slow and it's only doing two damage. But if you charge up the whole bow and then release, the actual damage goes up as well as the number of hits that go on. So we're doing five damage and you can hear it that it's a lot more shots. So as I mentioned, following a charged power shot may be more effective to gain quicker KO status than simply waiting to charge it up and then releasing. On the other hand though, power shots do take a lot of stamina, so maybe charging up the bow in a certain situation will get you a knock without worrying about stamina loss. Right, so gameplay style is really dependent on the user and the situation that you're in. Last two moves here, I want to talk about the Dragon Piercer. Now I'm kind of sad that this thing was really nerfed heavily when Iceborne came out, so it's kind of useless now. It was initially a very charged up piercing shot that goes through the entire body, and it could honestly still be effective if you're using it against big monsters like Rodoban, Uragon, big monsters that you can hit at multiple critical points. But if you're fighting something small like Kirin, it's absolutely useless at this point. It takes up way too much time to charge, and the shots don't deal as much damage anymore. So one of the final attacks here with Iceborne is the 1k dragon attack. This utilizes your slinger to load a powerful spread shot. So it's great for damage, unfortunately though it does leave you in a bit of a slow recovery animation. So my recommendations for using this would be either to wake up a monster or to stagger a monster if they're exhausted. Now if you want the most damage out of the 1k dragons, be sure to have your power coating on. It does increase the damage. Additionally it is a spread shot so as you can see here I have to get really close just to make sure it's effective. Lastly, if you can use piercing pods, use them because for some reason they do extra damage as you just saw. They're the only slinger type that do that extra damage. Everything else is very basic, seven to eight shots. All right, so now that we've discussed the basic attack and some general ideas about stamina, let's jump right into some combos and then after that, I'm gonna talk about some other tips. So since not much has changed since Iceborne has dropped in, let's start with dash dancing. Dash dancing is still great, highest DPS you get, but many players still overdo it. Essentially, dash dancing is charging your bow to max, firing a power shot. From this initial buildup, you move into the repetitive part of this combo, which is you dash to maintain max charge, rapid shot to output some high DPS and still maintain your charge, and then follow it with a power shot for the highest DPS, bringing you right back to dashing to charge up again. And you'll repeat this a couple times until the situation changes or your stamina is getting low. The big thing to keep in mind, as I've mentioned before, sidestepping charge and power shots both take up huge amounts of stamina. So I'll be talking about stamina skills in just a bit, but essentially if you don't have a good stamina build, this combo is fairly hard to be used effectively and also could endanger your life. Alright, so if you don't want to risk your life, remember good old quick shot? Yeah, let's add that in. So instead of dashing all the time, you start with a quick shot followed by three rapid shots to charge, then a power shot. From here, you have the option to dance around one to three times before you reset with a quick shot. Throwing in the quick shot reset gives you proper time to recover your stamina very well and lets you jump back into DPSing without risking your life. If you need to move out, you have enough stamina to dodge, get away, just in case. And if you are safe, then you can continue DPSing. If you don't add the dashing to this combo, this combo is super great for stamina, very easy for mobile monsters. Of course, you lose a little bit of DPS, but it's much safer. For those in-between moments when a monster, say, is exhausted, I'd recommend a power combo where you start with a quick shot, then follow with a rapid, power, rapid, and then power again. This combo does have more damage than the previous one I mentioned, but because of the extra power shots, you have an animation lock, so it's a little bit more ideal for smaller openings. It does let you build up charge and output damage with the power shots, but in case you need to break protocol, you have the rapid shots in between so that you can move around. Okay, other quick tips as well. Within all of these combos, don't forget to use your arc shots, especially at the start of a hunt. Always follow your arc shots from the power shots just because they won't be max level, they'll be level 2. But that's still better than level 1 shots or wasting too much time to aim and launch a fully charged arc shot. Next thing I'd like to point out, every bow has an infinite amount of close range coatings. Yes, that white little thing in the bottom right there, you should be using it. Why exactly? Well, close range is two things. Number one, it eliminates the range of your bow effectiveness. Normal shots lose their damage when you're too far or even too close. Yes, that's right, too close and you lose damage. Here you can see I'm hitting a critical 29 as I'm moving in. I'm within the appropriate range, but as soon as I get too close, I'm hitting 24. 
But with the close range coding, I can go as close as I want and I'll still hit a solid 32 crit. Which brings us to the second function that yes, close range does increase damage by about 10 to 20% depending on the attack, minus arc shots. So my suggestion here, just use close range coatings when you can. When you're not using another coating, just put it on. For power coatings, this is just my suggestion. It's not the only way to use it, but you only have 70 shots in a hunt. So unless you plan to die or far caster, you're going to have to conserve. And I would use these after the initial arc shot knock. It's pretty easy to get your first knock, so I wouldn't use the power coatings until you get your first big opening. Then open fire on that monster. Since you have this limited amount, try to save them for big openings. Knocks, para, sleep, exhaust. Chances where you know you can get high DPS and not waste any power shots. Next tip I want to talk about, the Clutch Claw. If you have an opening, go for it. Unlike most other weapons, the bow's damage from the Clutch Claw can actually be pretty good. It has three swings which actually charge your bow. And once you jump off, you have a chance to shoot a charged rapid shot. So it's beneficial to both weaken apart and also just get some good damage in. Okay, so let's jump right on into the big skill first, Stamina. Now I'm not a super math nerd on this, the Monster Hunter math guys are the best if you want a full breakdown. But I'll discuss my options and tell you what you need to know as a casual player and also give you some options for your build. Your two main skills for stamina management are Constitution and Stamina Surge. Now Constitution reduces the amount of stamina that you use. It's 10% per level and it stacks differently with different skills. Stamina Surge boosts how fast you recover your stamina. We'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, so let's focus on Constitution. If you have it maxed out, you get 50% reduction, and that's actually the cap in Monster Hunter World. Now, while that's great and all, you probably don't have 5 level 2 jewel slots sitting around. So most bow users, they'll have to make a work their way around using dash use and eating for black belt. The use of dash juice brings us to the first meta build, Constitution 3 plus dash juice. That brings you very close to 50%, enough that you won't even notice a difference. If you don't eat up for black belt, this is your most cost effective stamina reduction build. I on the other hand do like to eat up for black belt, so with black belt and dash juice you are able to cap your stamina reduction with two constitutions. Ideally one, because you won't notice the difference really and it saves you a jewel slot. Since we're on the topic of food, let's just go over this real quick. Black Belt, as I mentioned, with a food voucher, you could always get it, and it's great. If you don't have this option, make sure you have Cons 3 and Dash Juice on your build. But if you can, I suggest making a favorite meal. It takes 4 oranges to make Black Belt, and then if you want to add, add 2 yellows for Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter adds a little bit of extra damage to your normal arrows, which is perfect because most bow builds have to use a lot of jewel slots for other perks. Now, my recommendation for Stamina Surge, get as much as you can. Maxing this skill isn't as hard anymore with the level 4 combined jewels. You can combine it with release, physique, and those are perfect for bow builds. The reason I say to max out stamina surge is because we go back to quick shot. The amount of stamina you can recover with max stamina surge during one quick shot will be hugely different from when you have none of them. So try to get it on your build as much as possible. So everything else from here on I'll talk about from a build standpoint. Okay, so bows are elemental weapons and they have a different element for each bow. You can't change them and every bow has different coatings as well that can't be changed. So ideally, you're going to have to be making different builds for each bow that you use. So first and foremost, make sure you have element level 6 on all bow builds. Try to use some armor perks if you can since level 6 is a lot for jewels themselves. As a quick example, I use the Kirin gloves here because they give me level 3 thunder attack. For augments, go as much element as you can. If you want to throw in a health regen, that's okay as well. If you are using the Kiar or Teroth weapons though, be sure to use custom augments. This is an additional 50 that you can add on to your element damage and then do attack for the rest of the augments. For Safi weapons, you'll want to augment for element up. If you're looking for a more fun build, at least 3 element up and then you can put on some other coatings. Safi weapons only come with power coating so you'll have to use one of your augment slots for more coatings. All bow builds should have the Mighty Bow Jewel. As I mentioned before, it gives you that extra charge shot, which is basically necessary for you to get good DPS. On top of that, the Spread Jewel is also quite important, since their strongest attack is the Power Shot. This also boosts the 1k Dragon's attack. Lastly, keep your crit as high as possible. Weakness Exploit Jewels, Master Charm for Critical Eye. These are necessary as I'll show you right now that the best element damage multipliers are only for critical damage. Specifically for Teroth weapons, you're going to go with the Rarity 8 ones and upgrade those to the Rarity 12. 
These builds will need release 3, so you'll have to keep that in mind. I would recommend using the refresh slash release jewels that I talked about before. That way you get stamina surge and release on your builds. Save the level 3 slots for spread jewels if you can. You should be using the 4 piece Rathalos set for true critical element that's on the build. This armor perk is the highest element multiplier in the game, which gives you great element damage with these health weapons. Any 5th armor as well, I would recommend putting on something with elemental perks like I mentioned before, Kirin or something with some good jewel slots. Finally, we reach the QR builds, and probably these are the most strongest DPS that you can get. Your best choice is a 5 Safi piece, specifically for the element status boost that gives you 150 extra base damage to your element. And the great thing is, is that this does stack with the critical element boost that comes with the QR weapons. And for those of you wondering, no, the critical element on the weapon does not stack with the true critical element found on the Rathalos armor. So don't waste your time making builds with Rathalos armor if you're going to use the QR weapons. Now, if you aren't aware, Safi armor does damage you every shot that you take. So you're going to be taking a lot of damage. So I would recommend on this build having a Fury Charm. The Resentment perk gives you 25 plus attack when you have recoverable or red health bar basically. Which with the Safi armor is going to be basically every single time, every time you shoot a bow. So you must have this one on any weapon in general actually if you're using Safi armor. Have Resentment. Fury Charm just helps so much. Now I do want to mention that using the Safi armor is quite a risk. You're taking damage every time you shoot. So this may not be the best build to start with. If you want to make it more comfier, take off the Fury Charm. Replace some of the jewels on the build and put some vitality on. Gain some extra health so that you have some health and some buffer space to take damage while you're learning the bow. Or if you don't even want to do that, go back to the Teroth weapons. They're great weapons. The Silver Rathalos armor is much safer. Learn it from there and then you can jump on over to the Safi armor. And that's the bow ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Consider liking and subscribing if you did for more Monster Hunter content and new things to come. If you have any questions or want me to do other videos, comment below and I'll definitely get to them. I hope this has helped you guys out. So get out there, drink some dash juice and start bowing. See you guys in the next one. Scott Sensei is out.